What's up, everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Today, we are gonna talk about render. How to render your 360 video in 8K quality and upload directly on YouTube to save time and preserve the highest resolution possible. You are watching right now on the background is a tiny planet version of my latest music video release. This video is rendered in this setting. So if you want to check out the quality difference between your regular render and my suggestion render setting, uh, go check out that video. If you want to learn how to render this way, let's dive right in. So uh, before we start, uh, we want to talk about why you want to render your video before upload on YouTube. So I am living in Southern California in Venice. So I have very fast internet connection, meaning I have really fast upload speed. Uh, so if that's the case, you don't want to do extra render, you want to do one pass, you can simply just render pole res 444 uh, in 8K quality and upload directly onto YouTube. YouTube will compress the video for you and then will release it for you. But the problem is the video files are in pole res 444 or uh, in my case in PC, the file is big. Usually for like this music video is about like three minutes long probably the file was like 30 to 40 gigabytes so you gotta upload 40 gigabytes onto internet onto youtube you have to have really fast upload speed for the rest of the world people usually don't have that kind of bandwidth to upload video so that's why you want to compress your video before upload on youtube another problem and concern is you have no idea how youtube compress your video and Again, YouTube changes the way to compress and codex every single day. And I actually will not trust YouTube to compress my video. You already spend so much time and money to try to make your video as high quality as possible in 8K resolution, like really high bit depth. And you want to control the last step. How do you compress the video and for internet de deliver? The goal of this tutorial is make sure that YouTube is not gonna compress your video. You upload your video onto YouTube, it will work directly on YouTube, Facebook, Weir, or any platform in H.264. So, uh, standard workflow stuff. Uh, first, uh, you gotta like compress and stitch your video in the Mystica, ADP, or Instant Studio Pro Stitcher, and you put it inside Premiere or After Effects. Do editing right here, as you see right here. Just do your editing. And then, um, then go ahead right here. The first step, the output is go ahead and hit export media. So my first pass of output, my standard setting is trying to make it as high quality as possible. This footage is shot in Instant 60 Pro, so uh, in 8K. So go ahead, I will pick QuickTime Render. Uh, I am on a PC, so I will pick the Avid codec, which is DNxHR, and I will pick HQ 8 bit. Uh, because the footage is only 8-bit, it's not 10-bit or 16-bit. If you shot in the red, you might consider, consider the render in 16-bit, a higher bit depth to preserve the color profile. But it's, since I shot in Instant 360 Pro, that is the highest quality that I need to output. Again, if you are on a Mac, you can go ahead and pick uh, QuickTime ProRes, ProRes 444HQ. Uh, you will have the same high quality output. Uh, and then here you will hit Match Source. If you hit that match source, uh, you will have that 8K resolution, which is right here, as you see right here. Uh, you don't need to pick that, uh, but again, if you have a powerful machine, go ahead and pick this as well. Uh, in here, I picked the VR video and monoscopic, but again, you don't need to pick that at all because we are not, this is not a final render. This is actually the highest quality render, and then we compress down with other software. But you can go ahead and pick that if you want to, or you don't need to. And then this is also optional, but again, if you have a fast machine, go ahead and pick that. It will increase your rendering time, but your video quality will be higher. And then you go ahead and hit export. So now I will show you the same thing on After Effects. So if your final render is After Effects, again, uh, people ask me why you want to render from After Effects. So let's say that you finish your edit, you bring your video in, you want to do a patch of your uh, tripod. So see right here, uh, you're usually using metal skybox and you hit edit. Uh, here edit one and you see that I put the logo right here uh, but then you go back to open render output and send and then right here you can output from after effect as the final output but again same principle uh, you go ahead and hit add to render queue in here uh, just save where you want to save the video and then right here 
uh, you could only need to render RGB and same thing in here you can pick quick time actually here you don't need to even pick quick time you can directly pick the epic codex right here DNXHR and here same thing 8-bit HQ and highest quality and then you can render directly from after effect so after you finish rendering from after effect and premiere now you're gonna compress it with FFmpeg a lot of resources online teach you to compress FFmpeg uh, like this one on github but a lot of them require you to code if you are a coder and you want to have full control of FFmpeg and you can stop right here and just go ahead and get this URL and post it on description and then that is all the command you need to compress your video but again if you like me don't like the code then go ahead and download this little software called hybrid so go ahead and open it right now this is a great little software, basically leverage FFmpeg, but in a GUI interface. So you don't need to write single code and you can do all your render all in here. Okay, I changed my resolution here. So hopefully now it's better. You see, uh, I, there's no way for me to actually make this interface bigger. Uh, but that is a software you need, uh, you need called Hybrid. Basically, it's a GUI interface, allow you to leverage FFmpeg without writing a single line of code. So the step one is go ahead and find a video file. So it is metal skybox output, it's .mov file, and the file is 80 gigabyte big in sizes. So I'll go ahead and open that. And now in the video codex, you pick X264. And the audio handling, you actually have audio. So we'll hit custom. And then now you move on to the next tab, which is the X264 codex. Uh, in here, you can pick, I will pick average bit rate, one pass. Again, you can pick two pass. I don't think it's necessary because it will take forever if you're just rendering twice. So to save time, I can just do one pass. And then in the ABC profile level in here, pick none. And then the next one, you pick unrestricted. That's very important. Make sure you pick that first. And then the next step is in the bit rate. Uh, since I got an output AK quality, the minimum for AK, uh, the recommended for AK is 200, is 200,000 KB per second. And here, then this is the number I found that have the most smooth playback and also uh, had the smallest file size. So that's what I use. Again, if you're only gonna output 4K, you can just use uh, 100,000. And since we are gonna do AK here, so I will keep 200,000 here. And in here in the calculation precision, uh, if you shot the footage in a red or in a high bit depth camera, and uh, you can pick 10 bit, but since I shot this footage in Instant 260 Pro, so 8 bit is good enough for me. Again, if your color profile, uh, if you grade it in DaVinci, you can use 444, but on this case, 420 is good enough for me. So next, I'm gonna move to crop. Uh, in crop, if you wanna output a 4K, you can, Check the resize and put in a 4K resolution here. But since I cannot do 8K here, so I will keep the resolution. And then I move on to the next audio. Audio is very important. Don't forget about that. Uh, in here, check this audio encode option and hit the plus sign. It will pull in the audio file from the video file. Again, uh, you don't need to use that. If you have a spatial audio and you design a spatial audio in other software like uh, like Logic and Pro 2, and you can import that uh, spatial audio file here and mux it in here. And that is the option. You do it right here. And then uh, next thing is go into config, config, and then pick output, uh, actually pick path, and just check this output path to source path. And that is all you need to do. And now you go back to the main. If you hit the generate, it will generate and path. And right next to the your source file, which is really convenient. And then you can go ahead and hit this plus sign, and then hit this little man icon, and we we'll start rendering. So after you render, here is the file finish render is an MP4 file. But this file have uh, don't have any 360 metadata. We need to inject that in order to let YouTube know that is a 360 video. Uh, so go ahead and download and install uh, this little file. Uh, where is that? This spatial media. Meta injecting to is by Google, it's free. Go ahead and open that. And in here, just hit open and go ahead and pick the render we just did, which is an MP4 file. It's this one. Go ahead, open. And if you shot in mono, that's all, all you need to do. And then you can hit the inject meta. But if you shot an up and top and bottom stereo, check this. If you have spatial audio, check this as well. And then hit inject meta. 
and let the software do its magic. And after you inject, this is the file you generate. Uh, see this combine inject too. And let's check out the file size. And then property. The file size is only 5 gigabyte compared to the uh, the Avid or the ProRes file, which is 80 gigabyte. That is literally 20 size, 20 time uh, size reduction. So you will save a lot of bandwidth when you upload the video onto YouTube. So the last step is very easy. Just go on to your YouTube channel. I'll hit upload right here. And then just go ahead and drop your file into here. And then go ahead and upload onto YouTube and then you are done. So that is how you render output your 360 video in 8K quality and compress it with FFmpeg and upload it on YouTube to preserve the highest quality in the smallest file size. Again, on the background is my latest release on my music video. If you want to learn how to create this music video, please comment below. Uh, like, tell me what you want to learn. Like, uh, I can teach you how I stitch this uh, with Mythica VR or Auto Video Piano Pro. Uh, I could also teach you how I do pro production, and I can teach you how to do color correct on this video, and how to how to do all the stuff I do special effect using Canva 360 or using Metal Skybox. And also, I'll teach you how I can create a funny little, uh, tiny little planet video version of it uh, in high HD resolution so you can push it on Facebook or push it on Instagram to promote your video. Uh, if you don't want to learn all of this, don't forget to comment below and let me know what you want to learn or you just want to learn everything. And then I'll make a long tutorial just step by step to walk through my entire pro production workflow just for you guys. And again, if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumb up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thank you.